Ransomware is hitting hospitals, Home Depot Canada leaks customer data through no fault but their own, and researchers found a new way to extract security keys from Intel CPUs. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morse, and this is ThreatWire for November 3rd, 2020. This is your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Make sure to check out the new Teespring store. The link is down below in the description for your very own ThreatWire hoodies for the cold winter season that is coming up very soon. I highly recommend ordering early because shipping does take a little while for these kind of drop shipments, but I did order my own sample. What do you think? I thought it was pretty cool. I'm wearing a size small. This is a Hanes hoodie and it's very, very soft and warm. Uh, in fact, my heat is on, so it's kind of hot in here. So I'm going to continue. Also, I am doing another Wi-Fi pineapple giveaway. I've got three more Hack Shop gift cards to give away. So you can get a free Wi-Fi pineapple Mark 7 along with free US shipping. So just check out the details via the link to my YouTube channel, which is down below to enter that giveaway. Today is the last Last day to enter, so good luck. And on to the news. On Wednesday, October 28th, a joint advisory by the Department of Health and Human Services, the FBI, and the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency of the US was released detailing ransomware that is actively targeting the healthcare and public health sector. According to the advisory, attackers are using Ryuk and Conti ransomware for financial gain against hospitals and healthcare providers in the US. Given the current climate of COVID-19, the potential of a cyber attack against hospitals will put more stress on the networks that these businesses run on. Now, CISA, the FBI, and the HHS believe that the threat comes from the threat actors behind the Russian botnet, which is called TrickBot, which is a type of malware used to to steal credentials, exfiltrate mail, crypto mine, and deploy ransomware such as Ryuk. Now, the malware is usually sent via phishing campaigns that contain links to malicious websites or malicious attachments. A TrickBot module, which is called Anchor, was named, which was observed by the FBI back in 2019 in action. This module now has a new tool, which is called Anchor DNS, which is used for DNS tunneling between the victim and a remote attacker. The advisory also includes indicators of compromise, including an executable file with a 12 character randomly generated file name, which they place under three different directories potentially. C Windows, C colon Windows Sys WOW64, or C colon Windows App Data roaming directories. Obviously that is under the user directory. They also included multiple file names that the malware creates on a victim machine as further indicators. TrickBot has already been actively used in the health sector, though a coordinator attempt by Microsoft and other tech companies had been used in early October to take down the C2 servers by tracking down IP addresses of the attacks. The new government-backed report does not name any specific hacker group associated with the attacks, but security firm FireEye called out UNC1878 as the group behind deploying Ryuk ransomware against those health organizations. Now, CISA, the FBI, and HHS are urging hospitals and health providers to patch their systems, use network segmentation, and take any non-necessary devices offline. They also recommended regularly backing up data and password protecting offline backups, as well as having a recovery and mitigation plan. Hundreds of Canadian customers of Home Depot were met with an onslaught of hundreds of Home Depot confirmation emails when they opened up their email inbox, which ended up being the result of an internal system systems error, not a data breach. On October 28th, multiple Home Depot Canada customers started tweeting and contacting Home Depot about receiving emails that were not associated with themselves in their inbox. For example, one user shared a screenshot over Twitter showing 660 plus unread emails from Home Depot, each pertaining to a different customer with a different order number. These emails were pickup order reminder emails, and each order number was sent to hundreds of recipient email addresses. None of these emails were BCC'd either, so each recipient could not only see the contents of the email, but also see hundreds of other email addresses that it was sent to. Each pickup order 
order confirmation included order details like the product, price, quantity, and partial credit card information for the order, but also names, emails, home addresses, and some had phone numbers attached to them. Home Depot originally tweeted that this only affected in-store customers, but it also affected Home Depot.ca customers as well. A link to check the order status on Home Depot Canada's website was also included in each of those emails, which means an attacker could click on that link, use the email address and a brute forced password to obtain more information on each customer, potentially leading to more concerns. With the emailed personal data, an attacker could craft phishing emails or social engineer their way into picking up other people's orders if Home Depot Canada was not strictly checking each ID for each pickup. Given how much information is online about consumers, it would not take much work for a malicious actor to use the names and home addresses, along with details from social media, to create a kind of dossier on anyone that they are interested in, potentially leading to stalking or trespassing. What sounds like a simple misconfiguration of customer data by Home Depot Canada should be considered a major security concern, and affected individuals can report the company to the Canada Privacy Commissioner, as one Twitter user recommended. Consumers can also take steps when ordering from online companies. You can open a public-facing address online using a virtual service or using a local postal service alongside a secondary phone number such as a Google Voice number. Using a virtual credit card number, a gift card, or a secondary credit card can also help with privacy issues like this. Before we hit story number three, I wanted to say thank you so much to my supporters at patreon.com slash threatwire. Check out these amazing new fur baby photos from my Hush Puppy Perk Level patrons. They're so cute. They're totally awesome. Thank you so much for sending them over. Keep them coming. I know that today is giving a lot of people anxiety. If you are watching this on release day, everybody knows which day it is. So if you want to send all of your friends fur baby photos, I think they would truly appreciate it. <laughs> patrons now get access to discount codes for the Hack5 shop as well. Check out this month's discount code over on the Patreon page. Every few months a new code will be generated, it may include different discounts or different freebies, so keep an eye on the page for updates and I want to thank the Hack5 shop for helping me make that happen. As always, you can find all of the perks, including that one, over on the Patreon page. Thank you so much to my patrons, I truly appreciate you. Props to Gnome for sending over this story via my Patreon Discord server. Researchers have discovered a way to extract security keys for some Intel CPUs, which could allow an attacker to decrypt microcode updates from Intel. Researchers at security firm Positive Technologies, there are three of them, found this flaw, which affects any Intel CPUs running on Goldmont architecture. So that includes some Pentium, Celeron, and Atom processors for desktop, automotive, embedded, and mobile under the product code Apollo Lake, and server processors under the product code Denverton. These processors were released in 2016, and they are used in low power to power efficient devices like cloud books, IP cameras, small PCs, and in-car entertainment systems and netbooks. The researchers found a critical problem about three years ago within the Intel management engine, which Intel patched, but CPUs could still be rolled back to earlier versions so they could keep on messing around with the vulnerabilities. They used this same vulnerability earlier this year to get into a service mode, which is called Red Unlock, which is used for debugging code before the chips are actually shipped. They used a USB cable or a special Intel adapter to transfer data to the CPU, allowing them to reverse engineer the microcode and eventually extract the RC4 key used for updates. They dubbed this hack the chip red pill. Now while cool, this attack cannot be used on vulnerable remote machines. It must be done using physical access. It's also not permanent. So if a machine was left alone in a hotel room or at a coffee shop, once it's restarted, Started, the CPU would go back to its normal status. So chances are slim of being actually targeted in this attack, but it could be fun from a rooting scenario. 
Before I leave, I want to say thank you so much to Sean M. Damon or Demon, Jason S., Kristen R., and Stephen M., who joined the Patreon team this week. Thank you to each and every one of you. You are awesome. And with that, do not forget to like and subscribe. I'm Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet in my brand new Threatwire hoodie. Bye! Thank <laughs> you.